Almost 4,000 people are on parole and probation in Marion County. We have roughly 600 people every year that are released from prisons back into our community. This is both the end and the beginning. An end to incarceration for past mistakes, often involving drugs or alcohol, and always with victims. The beginning of a new opportunity, but often fraught with challenges and anxiety. We have to have a strategy that actually captures both the work that the state does through various state agencies, but also at the local level with the private nonprofits that are involved in delivering these services, with the faith-based community and with the business community to acknowledge this as a statewide and a community public safety issue. The theme this morning is giving chances to individuals who are returning back into society from incarceration. Individuals who need our help bridging the gap from a system of confinement to a system of a free society. Well, this is really a head and heart issue. You can care about it because it makes sense from a logical perspective. It saves the taxpayers money. You can also, from a heart perspective, know that if they become taxpaying citizens, if they become people who are giving back to the community, if they become good solid parents and good spouses, this is going to help our community all the way around. Everyone's safer and our community is stronger. People get second chances. How many people here haven't had somebody come alongside of them and helped you? I know I have. Supervision is the foundation that holds offenders accountable and keeps communities safe. In the past, clients could face harsh consequences while attempting to overcome barriers. Today, parole and probation deputies work to build rapport, focus on client strengths, and are trained in motivational interviewing and other evidence-based practices. When I first became a probation officer, it was really um, a person would come into our office and we would really do a lot of dictation. Um, we'd get court orders and we would tell them, go do this, go do that. Now it's evolved into really building a rapport and actually helping the clients change their cognitive thinking. Um, so not only referring them to treatment, but actually interacting with them and helping them change their behavior. I just want everybody to know that you can change, you know, it's not about who's holding you back. You know, all these people here, the probation offices and everything, they're, they're just people just like you, you know. And as long as you do the right thing, they have no reason to bother you. And, uh, you know, you can, you can be successful just like me. One of our mottos is, you know, what I model for my children, my children will become. We actually have that up in, on our board in our office and um, it holds true. And we're trying to break that cycle because many of them have grown up in those homes, whether it's physical abuse, sexual abuse, or the drug addiction. The Marion County Reentry Initiative offers parent skill building through SOAR, Family Building Blocks, and the Demunez Resource Center. I want you to go ahead and take a few moments and I want you to think of some encouragements. Right after I got out of court, I went to the probation office and, um, and talked to them and they directed me over here and that's when I very first met Derek and so he's like, hey, I'm going to be doing this parenting class, teaching it and I was like, okay, that's cool, you know, so I was really excited about it because when I first met Derek, he was an awesome guy, you know, so I knew I was, I was going to like this class. You know, I've raised my kids on my own and I didn't think I needed help. So I was kind of like negative about it, like why do I have to do it? But then like when I started coming and learning all the good things, I was like, wow, you know, like this is pretty good. This is stuff to know. I used to yell a lot. I used to just go pick that up or do this, do that. Now my communication is, you know, I ask them first, what do they want to do? How do they feel? The I feel statement, the communication what is wrong with them, because every time that they cry, I used to say, uh, be quiet, you know, you don't have to cry. Now I ask them, why are you crying? What, what can I help you with? And that's my big um, effort to do communication. The mission of Family Building Blocks is to keep children safe and families together. Our work is designed to break the intergenerational cycle of child abuse and neglect. The most high-risk families come to Family Building Blocks for support. And as you can imagine, families who are impacted by incarceration are at very high risk for intergenerational cycles of poor decision making, child abuse, and neglect. When we did look closely at the data, 
We were surprised when we saw that 35% of our families are indeed impacted by incarceration in some way. The most rewarding part, I think, for me, is what I learned from the parents. When I see an aha moment, when I see somebody that's really getting it, and then when people share things that you know, allow the rest of us to learn from their experiences, I find that really rewarding, and that's what keeps me going. But it's, it's seeing that light come on and uh, realizing that they had a massive understanding, a shift in, in their own paradigm, if you will. That's nice. Student Opportunity for Achieving Results, or SOAR, is an intense re-entry program on the Chemeketa Community College campus. It's such a fantastic opportunity, and, and I know that they might be reluctant going in to the program because it's unknown, they don't know what to expect, and usually they haven't had perhaps a very good relationship with their parole officer in the past, or our agency in, in general. But I've seen the results, and it's, it really is truly amazing. I've tried it my way, and it's, it's never worked. It hasn't worked. I'm trying to hope that I'll learn something to break that cycle. With the SOAR program and the uh, Chemeketa Community College, you know, they're right there. They're, they're great. You know, hey, we can help you get this if you want to go this way. We can probably help you up with the job. I honestly love the program. Uh, the teachers, uh, the Earth facilitators are there. They help me out, you know, but you can tell that they genuinely care. And I mean, I think it's fabulous. I think it's just the whole environment and I want people to be part of that, um, to give them an opportunity to grow, uh, get skills that they most likely didn't have in the past, and be able to live crime-free and uh, contribute to our community and, and build it up instead of hurting it. I think there's one thing that, that, that's wrong with the community, and I, I'm talking to myself. This is what's wrong with Dick Withnell. The professionals should do it. The county commissioners should do it. The governor should do it. I, I think that's backwards. It's the community that needs to step forward and to come, come alongside of these people. And the community, if the community does that as a whole, then, uh, then our whole community will benefit, and this will be the best place to live. These programs are working. People's lives are changing for the better and our community is much safer and stronger as a result. What a great return on investment. I don't know of any other program that uh, leverages the resources like this program does, whether it's community corrections, the education piece, the private piece, the federal, state, county, all the collaborative aspect of this is, is amazing. And frankly, in this budget limited environment that uh, believe it or not, we are trying to live in these days, uh, this is the future. So we have work to do to remove obstacles, to allow these people to come back and be productive citizens in our state and make a difference. And they will be the pebbles that will be used to change somebody else's life. The fact that you've been able to do this in Marion County, I think, is just a testament to the energy that exists with the Marion County Reentry Initiative and uh, how much progress we have made in this subject. This is not about the rich helping the poor. This is not about the good helping the bad. This is about people helping people. Those of us who are able, stepping up and being able to say, I'm willing, I am willing to offer kindness to somebody who truly, at this point in their life, needs it. What we're trying to do is we're trying to break that cycle of incarceration and giving people hope, giving families hope. Open your mind and your heart together I'm not saying to become a bleeding heart, per se. I'm saying just open it and think about what if a family member of yours made a mistake? Wrong place, wrong time. Accepted responsibility for that mistake, paid their assigned debt, and wants to get back into society and moving along with their life and forget that part of their life. What if that was somebody that you knew and loved? What would you do? I finally come to that point in my life where I think it's time to change. You know, and it doesn't seem hard anymore. I feel optimistic and just so, you know, I just feel like, used to feel like people were holding me back, or, but it was myself holding myself back. And now I just feel like I got the world at, at my feet and I can do anything I want. <laughs>